Hi everybody, this is Josh continuing our Figma course. In this lesson, we're going to continue looking at prototyping to create some simple but really fun animations. I'm going to show you how to create an animation like this that will move just as we hover over this word liftoff. So here we are in Figma and we just have a blank page in here right now. What we're going to do is press F on the keyboard and I'm going to choose from the desktop templates, just the simple desktop one. It's a 1440 by 1024. So I'll just click on that and it will create a new frame with those dimensions. And that's what I'm going to use for my canvas. So I'm going to zoom in on this a little bit. And for this lesson, you can go to joshuapomery.com slash downloads and get the assets for lesson 15 right here. And that will open a Google Drive a shared folder where you can download all of these PNGs. I've already cut all of these out so they have a transparent background and you can just drag and drop them right into your Figma window. I've already got them here in my downloads folder so I'm going to start with the stars background so I'm going to just click and drag and drop that right in here and what we're going to do with this first is rotate it 90 degrees and you can hold shift to snap it to 90 degrees there we go and then I'm just going to stretch it out so it fills the entire width of my canvas. And then I'm going to push it up so it, it's at the very bottom. You can do this very quickly with the shortcut Alt-S, and that will snap the bottom edge to the bottom of the canvas. I'm also going to add another kind of fill onto this image. So I'll click the plus button over here by the fills, and by default it will give us a linear gradient. Now that's what we want, but we want to change the colors and the direction. So I'm going to grab these handles and I'm going to move the white one down to the bottom and the transparent one all the way up to the top. Actually, I'm going to bring it down just a little bit. And then I'm going to change the white color here of this swatch to like a, a sky blue color, maybe something like that. And I want to use the same sky blue color for my second swatch, but also make it transparent. So I can just close this window for a second and then open it back up and then that color will be available down in my document colors here. So I'm going to click on my second stop here and choose that color and then on this slider here this is our alpha channel or transparency and I'll just drag it all the way down and that'll give us a nice gradient up into the stars there. All right there's our background. Okay the next thing I'm going to do is grab our earth asset here and I'll just drag and drop that one in as well. I'm just going to move this one down to the bottom like this and what we're going to do is create two frames so this will be our starting frame for the animation and this is actually going to get covered up by our next image here I'm going to grab my cloud asset here and drag and drop that in and we're going to push this one down if you move too far outside of your frame you'll see that it will pop out of the frame and you can just move it back in and to get around that because we're, we're going to need to be able to get around that later on you can use the arrow keys to nudge it and if you hold shift it will nudge it by 10 pixels so I'm just holding the shift key and pushing the down arrow and I just really want to make sure that the earth is just all the way covered up we can also resize our clouds just a little bit right about there then let's grab our shuttle I'll drag and drop the shuttle right in here and I want this behind the clouds so control and the left bracket key will push it back one or you can just drag and drop them in your layers panel right over here so I can click and drag them around in the layers panel to make sure that the shuttle is underneath the clouds and now let's hold shift while we shrink this down we want this to be at a little bit smaller and I'm gonna move it up and I'll get those red guides that will show me that it's aligned directly in the center or you can press alt H to snap it to the horizontal center and I think that looks pretty good maybe a little bit smaller right about there this is looking great. Okay, so now we just need some of these planets. So I've got Mars. We can just drag and drop this one in. These are not going to be accurate as far as their positions and how you would be able to see them because this is going to be a fun animation. So I'm just dragging and dropping these in here and resizing them. This is really up to you where you want to place them. I'm going to put the moon on this side. I'll put Mercury kind of larger, Mars a little bit smaller something like this maybe the moon should be 
larger like this. Okay, we're going to move those again, but for now, this is a great starting point for our next state of the animation. But first we need some text. So the text is also going to work as our trigger. So I'm going to hit T on the keyboard and just click and start typing. And I'm going to put in the word liftoff. Okay. And I'm using Roboto black italics and I'm going to make the fill color white. Make sure it's selected and then choose white. And I'm going to center this alt H will center it horizontally. I'll put it just slightly over overlapping the shuttle. Maybe I'll make the shuttle a little bit smaller now. Something like this. And I want to give this an effect. So I'll click the plus button over here by effects. And I'm going to use a drop shadow, but I'm going to change the color to that light blue color that we're using. And I'm going to take the Y axis to zero and increase my blur to 20. That'll give it a nice glow. Let's just go ahead and center this text horizontally and vertically. So it's going to be kind of overlapping this sh shuttle. All right, now we have this desktop one frame. So I'm going to select the whole frame and I can just press control D to duplicate the frame. Now we have a second frame that we'll use for the second state of our animation. And what I'm going to have to do is make changes to both of these. Okay. So first of all, let's just change our starting state because I want the planets to come in to view from the top. So I'm going to select them and just start to push them up and then I can do my nudge trick where I hold shift and I want them to be all the way out of the frame. So I'm holding shift and pushing the up arrow until they're all the way out of the frame. So our second state is going to be where they come down into view. And I almost forgot I need one more asset here which is this smoke. And I'm going to drag and drop the smoke in here. This one I'm going to shrink down quite a bit in this first frame. And I'm going to put it behind the shuttle and behind the cloud. So again, control and the left bracket key until it's behind the shuttle. Or again, we can use our layers panel to make sure it's behind there. And I want it to just kind of peek out just a little bit. So we're using that cloud asset really as the billowing smoke that happens with this shuttle takeoff. I want to copy that. I'm going to copy that to the clipboard with control C and I'll paste it and make sure that it's also on the second frame and in the right order. So it's behind the shuttle and in front of the earth. There we go. Now we can start designing the second state. So I've already got the planets where I want them. If you want to adjust those for your second state, that's fine. Just make sure that they're in view in the second one and out of view in the first one. They still have to be present in the first one, but off of the canvas. I'm going to push up the, the shuttle here quite a ways towards the top. And I'm also going to grab that smoke and shrink it down just a little bit. like that. Now the clouds, we're going to push those down. So they're going to be hidden off the canvas there. Now the earth will be visible, but I also want that to move just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is actually just resize it from the bottom. Also holding shift, holding shift will just make sure it constrains the proportions. So you don't do this and your photos will start to crop. So hold shift and it will keep the aspect ratio the same. So I want that to kind of, you'll know, have a little bit of this earth left in view. And then I can just change the text here to, I'm just going to say animation. So now we have two states here. We have our liftoff state and we have our animation state or the final state of our animation. So now I'm going to use this text in the first one as the trigger. And also the second one's going to be a trigger to take us back to our first frame. So let's go to our prototype tab over here in the right hand side corner. And I'm going to select my text and I'll get this little blue plus icon and I can click and drag and I'll just drag it right over to desktop two. And we'll get our interaction detail pop up here. And I want to change this from on click to mouse enter. So when the mouse enters, the text area right here, that's when the animation is going to trigger. And instead of instant, I want to use 
Smart Animate. Okay, and then I'll select our second text on our second frame here and do the same thing, but the other way. So I'll click and drag on this plus button and drag it over to desktop one and we'll get our interaction dialog pop up, making sure that we have it on mouse leave. So on mouse leave, it will go back to the beginning state and we can see that it's triggering desktop one. That's what we want. And it's already on smart animate. Great. So let's go ahead and preview this. If we built it correctly, we should have an interactive animation of a liftoff. So it's going to load here, it'll load the preview, and you can see I can mouse around everything except for where it says liftoff, because the liftoff, the text is my trigger. And as soon as I mouse over that, it's going to move. There we go. One more thing that I want to do is have the entire background. Remember we rotated that 90 degrees, so we have a lot more stars up above. And I'm going to have the entire background also animate. So I'll just change it in my second state here. And you can leave the prototyping tab open and you'll get uh, changes every time you go back to that tab. So I'm going to go back to the design tab just for a second and let's just click and drag and pull down our stars here. And it's up to you wherever you want to leave it. I kind of like this right about there. Okay, awesome. So let's go back to our prototype. We'll click on our second tab here and test this out. Cool. If you want to adjust the timing of any of these, one thing that we can do is click on our first frame here, desktop one, and untick clip content. That way we can see everything that's happening here. And if I want to change the, the speed of these, for example, Mars, maybe I want it to be a little bit higher here. And we can test this out. And there we go. We have our interactive prototype just with a mouse hover it will change the text it'll fade in and out we see the the smoke almost looks like it's kind of growing into view the shuttle takes off and the planets come down into view and the entire night sky pushes down this is a lot of fun and it's a really good practice for getting into graphic design and interactive web design because we can take this prototype and then be able to present, hey, I've got an idea for a website and I want it to be interactive. And we can actually use this to develop skills. If you're interested in pursuing a career in web design or animation or graphic design, you've just made an interactive animation in your web browser. So thank you for watching and bye for now. I also want to say a big thank you to Scott Mosby and all of his students and the faculty and staff at Salisaw Schools. I've really enjoyed making these videos. I hope you've learned a lot. And thank you for allowing me to be part of your educational content. Thanks again. Bye for now. <music>